So here we have a shutter retaining ring from a camera and uh, as the name suggests it's a ring and it's used to retain the shutter in the camera body. Here's a shutter, it's stripped of its outer housing at the moment, here's the retaining ring and you can see that it screws on at the back and that's used to hold the shutter in the camera body. So, what's all the noise about shutter retaining rings and tools to remove them? Well, there's a little bit to it. You often see, uh, if you go onto the, the budget places, sites on the internet, you can see tools for dealing with cameras and they look like they're a wonderful thing that you could unscrew rings from inside the backs of cameras but often that's not the case. These are the sorts of tools you often see when you search for shutter retaining ring wrenches or spanners and um, they can be useful but they can also be useless in some cases. Here's a nice simple roll film camera. This certainly could do a little bit of work we open the back of it, you can see that the shutter here is retained with a ring here. In this case, that ring has four notches to engage a tool. Now that, that's great, it's easy. You can take a tool like this, set it into those notches, Bob's your uncle, that's going to unscrew fairly easily. So you think, well, that's a wonderful tool. I'll get one of those and it'll work marvellously with my 35mm camera. But there's a problem. The problem with 35mm cameras is quite simple. Here's our retaining ring. Here's the opening in the back of the camera. As you can see, the retaining ring is larger in diameter than this width across here. It means that a tool of this size is going to be absolutely useless to you unless it happens that the notches fall neatly in these positions. Ten to one, they'll fall somewhere else. And the tool obviously will not rotate round there and it will not engage with the notches. That's a common problem with virtually every 35mm camera you'll find. It's because the gap here, the film gate, is narrower than the retaining ring. Here's a quick sketch of a retaining ring. You can see it's just a simple ring. It's quite a narrow band in this case. And it's just a notch at the top, right the way across the top, both sides. You can find these with notches, four notches instead of two, but that's not quite so common. But there's another design that you often see too, and it's like this. Typically they're broader, and they have a little wee notch on the outside edge. And the profile of those may well be such that they're domed up like that. And so your notches are in this area, well down from the top of the ring. And so you'd need a different tool to deal with that. This is a retinette. And in this case, though you probably can't see it, right down there is where the notch is to engage the retaining ring. And of course its opposite member is tucked in down here somewhere. So what sort of tool would you need to be able to deal with something like that? Well, there's a few choices you might get by with something like this. This was a pair of circlip pliers. It's had the ends dealt to to leave two flat blades. And as you can see, the narrow width here would enable it to get in and turn to some extent inside the opening at the back of the 35mm camera. Another alternative might be a tool like this. This one 
you can see it's narrowed off to pass through the film gate and it's just left with two spikes, two prongs to engage with that ring. They will work quite well. Um, they do have their disadvantages. The first one is they're quite complex to make. And the second one is sometimes they're a bit tight to get into the opening. Um, it's sometimes very hard to see what you're doing. And just on very rare occasions, they're no use at all. And I'll show you why. Now here we have another Retinet, different model. But you can see here, see that curve visible there? That's where the, the roof of the film chamber comes down. Yeah, because it comes down, it means that you couldn't pass a tool of this size down there easily. And even if you could, you wouldn't be able to rotate it once you got it down there. It would start binding on this edge. So you'd need a different tool to deal with that. And the tool we need is something like this. As you can see, it's flat, narrow enough to pass through the film gate, thin enough this way to pass underneath that obstruction, and with two lobes here and here to engage the retaining ring. And this is the type of tool that Kodak made for servicing their Retinet cameras. It's taken me some time to get around to making a proper one of these because you can sort of cheat using methods like this and get around it most times. Every now and then you'd strike one where the notches are really not in a very convenient place to get to. But a tool like this is great. It will fit down in there. You've probably got one here I can show you that's entire. It'll pass through the baffle there, drop down below that projection, rotate it till it engages with the retaining ring, like that, and it's very easy to loosen and tighten that retaining ring. And you can just fish this thing back out. So this is the tool that I've made recently. I've made this to do solely to do the retinets, but it will also do other models of camera. Now the ones that I've got in mind are the Retina 1B cameras. Anywhere where the retaining ring sits up proud of the lens rear lens surface, you'll know that in the Retina 3C type cameras, the rear group protrudes up inside the retaining ring. And that's why for those cameras you need to use a tool like this with a pocket for that rear lens group to drop back into. Of course you can get prettier examples than that. This is a, a very nicely made tool that I was given. This ugly beast is one that I made myself many years ago and you can see it's been fairly crudely machined. But this one here, that demonstrates it quite nicely. The edges are chopped away so that it'll fit through the film gate. It's got a pocket in here that will neatly go around the rear lens group on the Retina Xenon lenses, um, or Haligon lenses for that matter. And we're left with our two projections which, which would engage with the top of the retaining ring. And on the uh, retinas, the retaining ring's quite thin. But this tool would just engage neatly like that. But this tool, that's the one I made recently. And, yeah, it works pretty well. And I was thinking I'd done quite well with that one because I did, it was made to do the retinets and it does them very well. I thought, and it does the retina 1Bs. Then I thought, well, if it does the retina 1Bs, it's got to do 
the Retina 1As too, because they uh, are Zenar lens and the rear lens group is sitting down below the level of the retaining ring and therefore it shouldn't be a problem with those. But I discovered it was. And it's because the diameter here, the maximum width, was too large on the Retina 1A and 2A cameras. It needed to be pretty much a millimetre smaller than that. And so I made another one. So this tool, which looks very much the same, is virtually identical, except the diameter here is reduced to allow it to, to use it on a Retina 1A camera. Now inevitably these ones would also be suitable for various other random 35mm cameras that you find from time to time as well. But um, primarily that's what I've used these for. So, design considerations for a thing like this. Well obviously it needs to be thick enough in cross section to have a bit of guts to it so that it doesn't just fold up. The width across the narrowed section here needs to be small enough that you can pop it into the back of the camera. Now that may be either approaching it directly straight on or it may be that you hook it in to get through a baffle. But it has to be narrower than the slot basically in order to work well. The diameter here. Now these tools work particularly well when there's a circular opening, a tubular opening if you like in the back there and so when the tool is in place it's constrained. It can't um, move much to the left or right or up or down. It's being held pretty much central which means that it's much less likely to pop out of your engagement notches while you're fighting with the retaining ring and uh, makes it smoother in use. In that regard this works probably better than using a tool like this on a Retina 1B camera for example because there you've it's not really contained much at all and it just, just tends to uh, hop out of the slots fairly easily. So what other cameras have we got that we could demonstrate here? Let's have a quick look at these. This is an old retinette. You can see this has got a slightly different retaining ring. But again we've got two big notches there. These tools would work quite well for that. This one near yeah, here. This is a, um, an Iconta 35. Now you can see that that's got the second type of retaining ring I mentioned. The one that has notches on the external edges. These tools would be useless for that. They just will not fit. What would be wanted would be something with a larger major diameter here. And the pins will probably need to extend out further given the curved surface of that re top, curved, top surface of that retaining ring being somewhat curved and beveled away so that it'll engage with the two notches. It also means that some precision will be needed with making it so that the width between the two tabs is as close as possible to the width of those slots in the retaining ring. If it's too great, it'll slop around. One wing or the other is likely to come off that retaining ring and you'll end up making a mess of the retaining ring, um, for, at the very least scraping some paint off. Now, in that regard, of course, it's not uncommon for retaining rings to show some scarring from slipped tools. In this case, there's a scratch there. Um, that one's pretty bad. It means that probably somebody with a tool engaged firmly on this side allowed the one on this side to lift out of the slot and just scar it. Now that sort of thing is very very common in camera repair. Sometimes it's relatively unavoidable because sometimes retaining rings are very very tight and a bit of fighting is involved in getting the things loose. Particularly this design I would think. 
in which case um, your friend is matte black paint. If you can't see it, it never happened. Okay, so I think that pretty much explains retaining ring tools. And I think for my next video, I'll go into how to make something like this.